Last night, my husband, my friend, and I went downtown to hang out. When we got out of the car, I unplugged my phone and took note that it was at 80%. It was maybe a three-minute walk to the bench where we sat and we hung out for about 20 minutes. Around the 20-minute mark is when we noticed something wasn't right. My friend was the first to complain about it. They said that their phone was dying extremely fast and their phone charger block, which was fully charged upon arrival, wasn't working. Not long after that, I happened to notice my phone's battery level was at 17%. Typically, it holds plenty of charge. I charge it overnight and it still has 40-ish percent by the time I get home. Even while using it a lot during the day, I remarked about my battery level and my husband checked his. It was at 5%. He says it had about 50% when we arrived. It started to weird us out and we began to feel increasingly uneasy, so we decided to leave. By the time we made the three minute walk to the street where we parked, all three of our phones were dead. My husband has a set of wireless earbuds. Both the earbuds and their charger case were dead. He charges them every night and hadn't used them all that day. My friend's charging brick was drained. Their vape mod was mostly dead and my vape, which I had just charged the batteries in before leaving work, an hour prior was half dead. I use 18650 batteries and run it at 70 watts. It usually lasts two days before it gets even to 50%. My husband's vape was the only one that seemed fine, but his is unregulated aka there's no computer chip in it. It's just a battery inside a metal tube. It's like something drained all the power from our electronics very quickly and simultaneously. It was freezing, midnight and violently windy, so the park was completely empty aside from one typical downtown at midnight crazy person who came and went. Behind our bench was steps leading to a pub. We didn't hear anyone above us on the patio complaining about the issue. Paranormal activities happening in my room. Okay, so basically last night, my mom came home from work. And she found my air con and fan on. I didn't switch them on, by the way, but like it could have been anyone, right? Anyways, she switches it all off and decides to take a nap. She then wakes up to the sound of the fan on full blast again. So she thinks I'm home. But when she goes to my room... I'm nowhere to be found, and the air con and fan are on. Again. Now she's freaked out. So she calls me and she's like, Have you been home yet since work? And I'm like, No. I'm at a friend's place. I'll come home afterwards. So she tells me what happened. And I'm just super freaked out. Because that fan is new, and the only settings on it are 1, are 0, one, two, and three. The power of the fan, basically. And the only way to switch it on is by turning a knob, which is not exactly easy to switch on. Like, I understand if my cat walked on the air con and switched it on, but the fan, too? Come on. Have any of you experienced crap like this before? I'm a Muslim. And I'm not very religious, but my religion does believe in spirits, also called jinns. And we also haven't blessed the apartment since we moved in. What are your thoughts?
Late last night around 2 a.m., I was lying in bed looking at my tablet, trying to get tired enough to actually sleep. When I heard a loud crash from my bathroom's shower, everyone, except for my little sister, who can literally sleep through anything, heard it. Even my older sister, who was way on the other side of the apartment. I was far too scared to look by myself, and so my mom and older sister looked with me. None of us can explain what we saw. Inside of the tub, every shampoo, conditioner, and soap bottle was on the floor and not on their designated spots on the shelves where they were just minutes ago. My sister asked me if maybe the cats did it, and I said no. The cats were nowhere near, but she checked on them just in case and found them both sound asleep under her bed. The strange thing is, some of the bottles were situated where if they fell, they'd fall on the floor outside the shower, not in. Whatever caused this purposely made it so they'd fall inside of the tub. Also, I have been reading a book on local ghost legends. It's part of that series, Haunted America, and the book I'm specifically reading takes place in my state. And reading some of the especially creepy stories or the ones about places we frequently go to or pass by out loud to my family. One of them which I read to my family reminded me of an experience we had in our apartment back when we first moved in, knocking inside the walls. And we joked that maybe the ghost from that story is confused and thinks our apartment is their old mansion. Did the ghost, or whatever caused this, did they not like we were laughing about them, maybe? I live in a big house with my husband, my two chihuahuas, and my dad, who's disabled and in a wheelchair. Hence, he can't come upstairs. My husband and I sleep in the main bedroom, and the room next to ours is my office. I work from home. Last night, around 11 p.m., my husband woke up to the sound of someone typing on the keyboard, rather aggressively. My dogs heard it, too, and started growling. The sound of him getting up woke me up, so I heard everything that ensued. By that time, my dad was still awake, so my husband came to the office to check what was going on and then walked right down the stairs to ask my dad if he was typing. My dad replied that he thought we were the ones using the office. He said someone had clearly been mingling here. After a bit of talking, we all heard the typing again, and this time we clearly heard our rolling chair slide across the room. Husband came running back to the office and couldn't see or hear anything. He locked up all the doors upstairs, including ours, and came back to sleep. Needless to say, I couldn't go back to sleep, as I was scared and didn't want to get up to use the bathroom. At around 12 a.m., I very clearly heard the door to the office slam open and the typing started again. My dogs went crazy running to the door. For some reason, I struggled to get my husband to wake up a lot. And when he finally did, he checked, but as soon as he got close to the office, the typing stopped. Also, my dad was asleep by now. He also said the dogs seemed terrified to come into the office with him. Now I wonder if some ghost bars my office at night. Hi, I hope my story is interesting to you guys. So this happened in 2019, my math academy in South Korea. I was 16. I used to go to this small math academy when school was over and attended there for like four years 
I don't go there anymore because I'm in college now. I recall very strange but trivial things happening, like AC making noise and lights turning on, but I didn't think too much. I was busy doing schoolwork, and people there just thought the building was the building was too old. The windows were locked except one room. When I asked why, my teachers told me it was like this when they moved in, but there were very strange things too that spooked all the people out. There is a room which no one uses where students can go and study alone, and one day one of the chairs had a small shoe print like a kindergarten kid's shoe on it. My math academy only teaches kids over fourth grade. The room where I took classes, there was a big chalkboard, and beneath were a couple of cabinets. The cabinets just swung open for no reason. It happened so often my teacher put pens on the handles to prevent it from opening, but it just kept opening even with the pens. My teacher occasionally suffered from severe migraines and like he had a weight that was on his chest. I just thought it was because of the lack of ventilation and chalk dust, but I wonder if this is because of the paranormal stuff too. So about the actual story, our math academy really supported our schoolwork. So when the students wanted to go early to study, our teachers would tell students the password of the academy so they could go in. The academy is really small. The whole academy is barely a thousand square feet, and there are many other academies straight next to this academy, so it's not really that dangerous. Me and my friend were studying in my teacher's room before our class started. Our teachers didn't arrive yet, and we locked the door. The door was a glass door, and outside was slightly dim so we could see the reflection of the canteen. Someone unlocked the door, went inside, closed the door, unlocked the door so we thought it was one of our teachers, but the person never checked in on us. Our teachers always check in on us when we arrive early, so we decided to see who it was. My friend looked around in front of the teacher's room door, and I was watching the reflection of the door. I saw a girl in the canteen. She wasn't looking towards a glass door, so I couldn't see her face. She was wearing a black t-shirt, black Adidas sweatpants, black glasses, black hair, and wearing a ponytail. I said to my friend that there was someone in the canteen, and as I said that, the girl went behind the wall so I couldn't see her anymore. My friend went to the canteen to check. After a couple of minutes, my friend came back saying it was, I'll call her Sarah. Sarah, and she was in the study room. I was like, okay, and went back to my schoolwork. But I realized Sarah didn't wear any glasses, so I went to the study room to check it, if it was really Sarah. Sarah was coming out of the study room and was shocked. Sarah was wearing the exact opposite clothes from the girl I saw. As I expected, she had no glasses on. Sarah wore a white t-shirt, light-colored jeans, brown hair worn down. My friend and I were the first to come to the academy that day, and we studied in silence. So when any sound was made, we were able to hear it. The only time any sound was made was when the door unlocked, so no one came in here after us and before Sarah. The girl I saw shouldn't exist. I told my friend and Sarah what I saw. They didn't believe it. My friend said it must be her reflection that I saw, but it was impossible because she was right in front of the glass door and she was wearing a white button-down shirt with blue stripes. After my teacher came, I told her what I saw and she didn't believe it either. She searched the whole academy just in case and nothing came out of it. I knew almost everybody in the math academy, and I didn't know that girl. No one took it seriously, so I too just brushed it off. I always thought that I experienced this incident with my friend and it happened in broad daylight. So it was 
a bit scary. But as I'm writing this, I realized that I was the only one that saw a ghost, and I'm scared as crap right now. The Academy is still there, so I really hope something strange doesn't happen to the rest of the people there. First time posting here, I had an event transpire last night. That is a small paragraph in the story of my haunted house. To understand the story, it helps you understand the history of the property. Before my house was a house, it was a VFW club. To those that are unaware, it was a bar clubhouse for veterans of foreign wars. The house is over 120 years old. And many people have passed through the doors over the decades. It seems like that many tortured souls spent time there. There were probably soldiers, people that have done horrible things while fighting in our wars. I live in the U.S., by the way. Some of my elderly neighbors talk to me about my house and its history. When I'm out walking my dog, some of them even drink there. The real old neighbors. Paranormal experiences are a pretty common thing in this place, but this one is the most recent and happened last night, around 11.30 p.m. I was laying in bed with my two cats. They were sleeping together at the end of the bed, and I was watching a movie on my tablet. The lights were on, so darkness did not obscure my vision. Here is where things get interesting. In a split second, both cats jolt themselves awake and begin to fix their eyes on the doorway to the bathroom. I stop my movie and try to listen and observe. Keep in mind, both cats' eyes are perfectly fixed on the doorway. They gazed fixed on a central point in the middle upper height of the doorway. I found this strange, as there wasn't a sound to be heard. My first thought is they were tracking a fly or a bug. It is winter and cold right now. I don't think I have seen a bug in months. That is because no bugs were here. My vision is usually good and the lights were on, but nothing was there, at least nothing I could see. At this point, I'm trying to figure out what the hell these two cats are looking at. They began to turn their heads horizontally, as if someone was walking out of the bathroom towards the foot of my bed. While this was happening, their heads and eyes moved in sync with each other, as if two cats' bodies were attached by gears. I knew it wasn't a fly at this point for certain. Anyone with a cat knows how a cat will move when trying to hunt a fly. They will look up down and in circles as a fly buzzes across the room. With their vision at the foot of the bed, they started to look up to me, as if someone was walking up towards me. My hair begins to raise on the back of my neck. The pins and needles radiate down my spine to my arms. All of my senses begin to become hyper-focused. Yep, no bug, no buzzing sound but something is clearly there. I can sense a presence of someone there, breathing. The air is cold and feels heavy. At or around this time, I realize I'm having a visit from one of the houses of many ghosts. I used to be much more scared of this kind of occurrence, but now I just kind of accept it. If I get around to it, I will post more stories. Anyway, wide-eyed the cats are staring at something bright next to me. In fact, in perfect synchronization, their eyes slowly moved up, staring directly over my chest where I was laying. I can see someone standing over me, looking down on me. This freaked me out, loudly and out of reflux. I yell, what the fuck? For no reason, and without any input, the Alexa on my tablet said, Don't you want to see something paranormal? 
Please remember this is still real life. There is no embellishment. There was no reason for my tablet to do this. And it was loud as fuck. Now at this point, I'm very spooked. However, now I realize this thing, spirit, whatever, is trying to communicate with me. Now, I did not ask for Alexa, nor did I mention any keywords like ghost, haunted, etc. Out loud, I reply, no thanks. The air in the room lifted. The cat settled back down. I tried to sleep. I got a little. In summary, two cats saw something that I could not. Whatever it was walked out of the bathroom, past the foot of my bed, and then stood over me. And then it tried to talk to me through my tablet. Edit. I am sound mental health. By today's standards, anyway. I'm not even religious. I don't screw around with the Ouija boards and light candles. The acts of writing this post helped me mentally process what happened. But this is probably something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Edit, edit of the edit. Someone asked me to check my Alexa settings to see what the tablet responded to. I couldn't find that info because Alexa was off. I always shut her off because she's annoying. Also, I always kill the app in settings to increase battery life and increase tablet speed. So yes, she wasn't even turned on at the time of the story. If you want some cheap laughs, look at the downvoted comments way down below. Some big neckbeard energy there.